Because of all the tutorials on this channel, I'm always recording my screen and using different techniques to highlight parts of the screen to explain something. I thought it would be cool to show you guys my screen recording workflow and to give you a few tips on how to make your screen recording footage more interesting to watch. First things first, you need to record your screen. You can use any screen recording app you like. They all pretty much do the same thing, bar a few differences. I like to use QuickTime. So let's open up the QuickTime app and hit Control Command N to create a new screen recording. You can also create a new screen recording from the menu by going to File, Create Screen Recording. At the bottom of your screen, you have a couple of options. You want to make sure that Record Entire Screen is selected and under Options, I leave Show Mouse Clicks Off because I prefer to be in control of whether you see the mouse clicks or not. You can always add them later if necessary. I also always set the audio to my MacBook Pro's microphone. I record my audio externally into a Zoom recorder and I'm not going to use the MacBook Pro's audio from the screen recording in my edit because it would sound horrible. Instead, I'm going to use that audio to sync to my good audio in Final Cut Pro. If you're not going to be recording your voice for the screen recording, maybe because you have already recorded your voice and you just need the screen recording as B-roll, then you can set the audio to none. Hit record to start, and when you're done, click on this little stop icon up top. Head over to File, Export As, and I always choose 4K so that I can safely zoom into the clip when I'm editing it in Final Cut Pro. Next up, we need to sync the screen recording and the dialogue. There are a few ways to synchronize the screen recording and the audio, but my favorite way is to import the files into Final Cut Pro, select them, right click and create a new multicam clip. I'll make sure that I check this box here to use audio for synchronization and hit OK. I have a video where I go into multicam editing in more detail, so I'll link to that down below if you'd like to learn more about that. Now I can just drag and drop my multicam clip onto the timeline, right click to make sure that my video angle is set to the screen recording and that my audio angle is set to the audio file from my Zoom audio recorder. And then I'm ready to edit. When it comes to editing screen recordings, most of the time it's just a case of cutting out gaps and mistakes to make it snappy and short. There are a few techniques and tips that I can share here, so let's run through some examples. Let's say you recorded something on screen that needed time to load. You don't want the viewer to watch that in real time, so you can retime the clip and speed it up to keep it interesting. In this example with MTracker 3D, it took some time to track the movement in the clip so I created a speed ramp using the shortcut Shift B to mark the beginning of where I wanted to speed the clip up. And I used Shift B again to mark where I wanted the clip to return to normal speed. Then I changed the speed in the middle to make it much faster. When you play that back, you have a nice smooth speed up before returning back to normal speed. If you recorded your screen to use as a B-roll clip, you might have moved from one section to the other in the clip too quickly without allowing yourself time to explain it properly. So you might need to hold on a specific section of the clip for longer. In this example, I talk about the takeoff and landing properties of the AdMotion plugin, and you can see how I move from one to the other. Let's assume I wanted to elaborate more on the takeoff property. I can create a whole frame when my cursor is on the takeoff property by using the shortcut Shift H. And I can retime that to make it as long as I need it to be before moving on. If I play that back, you'll see how the screen recording freezes here for a bit before continuing. So using the two editing techniques that I just mentioned, you can retime your screen recordings to match your dialogue perfectly. The last step in my screen recording workflow is to add overlays. Once I've finished cutting the screen recording down by removing mistakes, unnecessary gaps, and so on, I'm ready to add some overlays to help me explain certain concepts better or to help me highlight areas of the screen. This also helps to make these screen recording videos more interesting to whoever watches them. I have recently started using Markup from FX Factory, which has a toolkit of super useful effects to help you enhance your screen recording videos. I used to create some of these effects and animations manually, but Markup does it so much better and using these effects saves me so much time when it comes to creating tutorials and screen recording videos. They are all title effects that you simply drag and drop onto your timeline and they are all customizable. You've already seen a whole lot of them in this video, 
But let's quickly run through what's included in this bundle and how you can use these effects to enhance your screen recording videos. If you need to bring attention to something, like to highlight a specific product on screen, for example, you can use the attention brackets. You can change the size, the spacing of the brackets, and the thickness and the color. The one I use the most often is the attention command to highlight a shortcut. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I use this one all the time and it's easily my favorite one in this bundle of effects. You can also bring someone's attention to something by using the arrow pointer or by highlighting text. If it's important to show your audience when you click on something, then you can highlight that using the highlight click effect. Another one I use a lot is the frame zoom effect. Using this frame, you can select a portion of the screen you want to zoom into, and it allows you to create some dynamic movements so that your screen recordings are not so static. Speaking of movement, you can use the frame pan effect to move the screen around. It's also handy if you need to pop on screen to say something. You can focus on a certain area of the screen to highlight something important using the focus area effect. Here, you can change the blur amount, the amount of shading, the stroke width, and color. Another way to highlight something is to use the focus loop, and this is handy if you need to zoom in on a small icon or something like that. Most of these effects have the option to build in and build out of the effect too. Lastly, you can use the privacy line to blur and pixelate sensitive information, like passwords on screen or even a license plate on a car. If you ever need to record your screen to create a tutorial or to add screen recording footage to a client video, then markup is a great way to make that footage more interesting and engaging to watch. The normal price for markup is $49, and at the time of making this video, it's currently on sale for $59. But if you use the coupon code Brad and Donna at checkout, you can get 10% off your purchase. I'll leave a link down below for you if you'd like to purchase it. In fact, that coupon code works for anything in the FX Factory store. So if you're not familiar with FX Factory, it's basically an app store for plugins and effects for Final Cut Pro and other creative software. I hope you enjoyed these tips and that they'll help you to improve your screen recording game. Don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to the channel, and to hit that notification bell. And I'll catch you in the next one.